I'm Arazia Tanasio. I teach economics here at uh, UCL and I'm also a research fellow at the Institute for Fiscal Studies. And at the Institute, we started a few years ago a fairly ambitious project uh, and research agenda on uh, um, trying to understand the process of uh, human development in the early years in developing countries and uh, trying to design and evaluate interventions that might improve the chances of poor children growing up in those countries. In 2007, we did a, a series in Lancet for the first time on child development. We estimated over 200 million kids under five in developing countries were not reaching anything like their potential. They have now re-estimated it and it's higher than that now. A Bangladeshi child by 60 months of age that comes from the poorest section of the community is about uh, 17 IQ points behind a slightly more affluent child living in the same areas. They get to school at age six with a language development of uh, three and a half years old. So it's as if you were sending three and a half years old to a school for six. And the big issue that has been pointed out in, this, in the literature is that uh, schools in developing countries are not equipped or not able to target the specific needs of children. They teach a curriculum which is designed for six years old. They will not adapt it. And the consequence of this, this is the children uh, that get there with a very poor language development, they will fall behind and they will fall further and further and further. And that's, that's that. That's their life chances gone. In India, uh, we are doing an intervention that was inspired by the original work in Jamaica 20 years ago by Sally Grant and McGregor. Uh, we've done something similar in, uh, in Colombia. And the idea is to change the parental practices, trying to improve the way in which mothers engage with their children at very young ages. There are children when we start the interventions are around 12 months old. And so the idea is to induce mothers to be more active with their children and to try to stimulate them much more. And these activities, they range from uh, little puzzles, games, songs, language games. Depending on the age of the child, they become progressively more complicated as the child ages. After finishing the picture, she asked, what is it? And the child said that it is a flower. So what do we do with the flower? We worship God. Do you have any God? Yes, we have some God like uh, little Krishna, Lord Shiva and Amma. Traditionally, poor mothers will think that play is for children. It's nothing to do with them, you know. And why would you talk to a child? They don't, I mean, certainly before the child talks well, they think, well, it's a waste of time. That's why we need to change their, their mindset. When the intervention started, Om Prakash was uh, barely 24 months old and he was very shy, he was inactive and he was not talking so much. So after all the activities, Om Prakash became very confident and uh, active. One of the ways to motivate the mother is to let her see that the child's benefiting and give them a bit of confidence and make them realize that they can have an impact. We work with local women that are living in the villages that, where the intervention is taking place. So these are women with, with standard level of education. They don't need to have any experience or expertise in early childhood development. But they are trained by um, our local partner in the intervention um, so that later on we build capacity in the villages themselves that when we get out or we take a step back that these women can continue playing a role in their communities. Having local women is crucial for us because uh, if you want to change behavior, it's important to convey the message through people they trust, the people they live with them.
we go and measure the development of the children before the start of the intervention and then we go back after one year to see the progress that the children have made and then we go back at the end of the intervention to see um, um, what impact the intervention actually has had. And the way we do this is through a randomized control trial, meaning that we do not only survey the children that do get the intervention, but we want to compare their outcomes to what we call a control group, basically a group that does not get the intervention. The second step is to use the variation that is induced by the experiment to model behavior, to model what's happening. What are the mechanisms that generate the impacts that we see? So that's the ability of the child, right? Okay. As economists, we can take a holistic view of the whole process and trying to understand the mechanism behind certain impacts. To do that, you want to model individual behavior, you want to model how parents react to a new environment, which might include the specific intervention. And by considering these behavioral reactions, you have a better pictures that eventually will allow you to design better policies. A lot of money is spent on feeding them, but food alone, once they're undernourished, is unlikely to benefit their development very much. It will, it will benefit their health and their survival but their level of cognition and ability to, to perform at school needs, needs stimulation as well. The Jamaica study is amazing because they did this intervention for two years on kids that, you know, from the age of one to three, and then you observe these kids 22 years later and you find that they, um, <clears throat> their wages on average are 20% higher. With the Jacobs research, Price, we will be implementing this uh, new intervention in India, which is a follow up to the one that we are currently doing. Our current intervention targets kids up to the age of three. The idea is to design a new intervention improving the nurseries that these children will start attending at age three and, uh, and follow them up to age five. And that's going to be very unique. People listen to economists, politicians listen, policymakers listen to economists and they use the language that they understand. They talk about money, investment, national development, you know, all of these, these words. That's what politicians want to hear.